Well, hey there. So today's video is about a subject that I've actually been very hesitant to talk about and trying to get around some, some old ideas that I had um, that were really blocking me and making this all the more difficult. All this vague booking that I'm doing. Today's subject, which you already know because you've read the video title, is about smoking pot and being on a spiritual journey. Can you do both at the same time? What happens? How does it help? How does it not help? Like if you're trying to integrate spirituality into your life in, in whatever way that that manifests, which by the way, could just be meditating. It could just be reading certain books or, or following certain teachers or watching certain videos on YouTube like this one. Um, whatever it may be, whatever your, your journey is, um, what I hear from a lot of people and what I've heard from uh, clients that I've had in the past is, you know, what about smoking pot? They pretty much assume that it's a no-go, that it's only, you know, it's only gonna slow you down, it's always gonna, only gonna block things, it's only numbing you, it's only turning you off to your actual journey. And in a way, yes, that can be very true. And in a way, it's not. A way to think about this is similar to like being on a diet and wanting to lose weight. You know, there is a place in that weight loss plan for carbs. There's a place in that weight loss plan for saturated fat. There are places in that plan for things that we don't think would fit in. But the reason we don't think they're gonna fit in is because up until that point, we've been abusing those things. Is pot an issue as, as a plant that grows in the earth and has been around for a gazillion years? No. Is our abuse of it an issue? Absolutely. Is sugar an issue? No. Is our abuse and addiction to it an issue? Absolutely. That's the difference here. You know, the, the biggest, you know, most, most profound spiritual experience I've had in my life up to this point is of course ayahuasca. I talk about it all the time. And one of the things I had to do to prepare to go to my first ayahuasca retreat was to stop smoking pot. And, and so what's interesting I also wanna add is that this is not some kind of moralistic thing or some even some kind of health thing, which I think is, is the place a lot of us go when it comes to smoking pot is it's either bad for you or it's just bad. From my experience, which is the only experience I can really talk about, cutting marijuana out of my life two weeks before I went to my ayahuasca retreat and then not smoking the entire time I was there, of course, was great. Um, I'm so glad that was part of the process. I'm so glad I took marijuana out of my life at that point. I'll be honest, up until that point, I had been abusing it because I had been coping with it because I had pretty much hit rock bottom, um, which is why I was going to Peru. Because I needed to cut off this habit I had of trying to turn to marijuana to take the edges off of my life because my life wasn't working. I needed to take that crutch out of my life because when I went to Peru, I was gonna be doing work. I was gonna be facing my shit. And so I needed to prepare for that. And I know that if I am abusing marijuana or anything, if I'm abusing food or, you know, in my 20s, I definitely drank a lot um, and abused that, you know, I, I know that if I had that in my life uh, at that retreat and at that time in preparation for the retreat, I would not have done the work that I did because I would not be fully present and I would have something to reach for when shit got uncomfortable. We get used to what, and again, whether it be marijuana or sugar or alcohol or food or sex or sleeping or Facebook or whatever thing that you extract and then use as a way to numb yourself, taking it out of your life is so important as a reminder that you don't need it. Um, it wouldn't be a video without Marco wanting to get through a door behind me, so let me just take care of that. So that, so that kind of sounds like, okay, well then, marijuana and a spiritual journey don't mix. And I don't think that's 100% true either. As much as it was important to not have it in my life at that time and at different times in my life when I need to just get comfortable with just like sitting with my shit, there have been times where it was exactly what I needed to shift out of a mindset and to get out of some sort of like mental rut I was in and be able to just kind of step back a little bit and go, oh, okay. I see this for what it is. I've actually had a lot of really profound breakthroughs after smoking pot, you know, particularly smoking and then meditating. I find that to be one of the most powerful exercises to do on your spiritual journey uh, to deepen your meditation. Now, it's something you should really only do occasionally. It's absolutely not something to do every time. Getting into the habit of associating that you need to smoke pot before meditating is Oh, I mean, I could go in on and on about that, and I will in another video. It really comes down to moderation. And this is true for marijuana in that, in where it's not true for something like sugar or alcohol or anything else. I don't believe, for example, that getting drunk has ever advanced my personal growth. I, I don't equate the two. I don't think smoking and drinking are exactly the same. I think that we often use them in very similar ways, but they're not the same. My experience with marijuana has not necessarily been 
an automatic numbing of the you know of things or or a, a softening of the edges. It doesn't take me out of my issues. Times in my life where I've really abused it, trying to make it do that, it's it's been very painful. It's actually really only done the opposite. It actually, I believe, can make you stuck in your head more and more caught up in your thoughts and of course paranoia which i know some people think is such like a stereotype of smoking pot but it's absolutely true from my experience and from my point of view marijuana is something to be respected and it's something to be recognized as a powerful uh, tool and uh, a powerful substance it's not about whether it's good or it's bad or it's you know legal or illegal or or any of that. I mean, all of that is us. All of that is, is humanity. All of that is, you know, American culture, is dare programs and wars on drugs and shit like that. All of that is us. And so I'm not going to speak to any of that because all of that is us. Stripping away all of that, stripping away all of that meaning that we've put on this plant that grows in the ground, that's all it is. And I believe it's there for a reason. I believe that everything is there for a reason. I think it's no coincidence that there's some plant in the ground that does some pretty crazy psychoactive shit um, and that we figure that out. And I have the same feeling about ayahuasca. I think it's incredible that out of all of the plants in the rainforest, somebody figured out, let me combine this with this to create this experience. I don't think, I do not think that trial and error would have figured that out. It's kind of like the idea of like who first thought of eating eggs. Like who was like, you know what, this is disgusting, but I bet we could make this into breakfast. I think to deny that it has power is incredibly naive. And I think to decide that it only has power for harm is also incredibly naive and total propaganda. When we start turning to it to feel normal or to eat or to relax or whatever, when it becomes this crutch, then it becomes a problem. And again, that's true for anything. So anyway, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, if you need more guidance on this, if you want to learn more about this, you can totally leave a comment below or you could reach out to me on my website, colindrucker.com. Uh, my email is below in the description. I'd love to talk to you about it. I think this is a really important subject, especially now, especially as marijuana is so much more of an accepted part of our culture. Um, I think it's really important that we kind of know uh, and have a healthy way of, of integrating it into our lives if we so choose. Um, anyway, that's all for now, and I will see you next time. Thanks.